Welcome back. Today we're talking about a truly unique partnership between the Paul Peck Humanities Institute at Montgomery College and the Smithsonian Institution. With us now are some of the 2008 Smithsonian Faculty Fellows, Professors Carol Malmey, Joan Nake, and Sonia Childs. Welcome to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Childs, I want to start with you. You teach constitutional law, and I think it's a, a hard bridge to gap. How do you make constitutional law and the Smithsonian a partnership? Well, it was quite a challenge, but it was really an optimum opportunity for our students to be exposed to the Smithsonian. Uh, in teaching constitutional law, one of the issues which, which uh, we were faced, and uh, this was their assignment, was to examine the Constitution, the right to speak versus the right to be silent, mm. both rights embodied in the document. And so our students were asked, my students were asked to visit a museum and um, create a recordation of this particular assignment by integrating their research. And um, it was just incredible. Based, uh, granted that the Constitution is at the National Archives, which is technically not a part of the Smithsonian, but again, there is the Anacostia Museum. And there are other documents, as mentioned earlier, which support or refute a particular position uh, uh, assumed by the student in their papers. You must have had some really fascinating results. Indeed, uh, the students were broadly exposed and were really forced to critically think about the issues. And I think another byproduct was just their simple exposure. Many of our students had not visited the Smithsonian, a wonderful place that is free for the most part, uh, very available, um, a premier institution. And um, so I think I did not take my class. I gave them the assignment. But each member of the class took a member of their family or a friend, a colleague, and so exponentially uh, the knowledge that we're talking about, the diffusion of knowledge, was certainly beneficial because you know, one student took parent, another student took their child, another student took their girlfriend or boyfriend. So the benefits clearly inured to the student. Wow. Yeah. Professor Melmy, let's talk about uh, the exhibit that you brought your mm -hmm. students. Uh, we were talking earlier and you said you're not a big hip-hop fan, but you brought them to see Recognize the Hip-Hop Portrait Exhibit. Tell it, us a little bit about that. It was quite a different experience than Sonia's. Uh, I was looking for an exhibit that the students would enjoy, sure. that they would find um, uh, interesting and contemporary. And hip-hop, of course, is the soundtrack of their lives. The National Portrait Gallery had an exhibit called Recognize Hip-Hop in Contemporary Portraiture. Uh, and it, it consisted of videography, photography, uh, oil paintings of monumentally sized portraits, uh, poetry projected uh, with sound, and installation art, all about hip-hop culture and performers. When my students heard that they would be going to uh, a, an exhibit on hip-hop, they thought they would be writing about the hip-hop artists. But no, their objective was, as Sonia's students uh, had as their objective, critical thinking, and they were supposed to look not only at what was being portrayed by these various multimedia artists, but also to look at the perspective and the point of view of those artists and what critique or comment they were making about hip-hop and about the various artists. So we ended up with multi-layered, multi-perspective, multimedia, surprising insights it surprised me that when we began, some of my students were, they were, not, they were not willing to admit that they thought very positively about hip hop. But by the end, they had all come around to thinking that this exhibition was wonderful and that it helped them to recognize, as the title of the exhibit suggested, some qualities in hip hop that they had not thought of before. For example, one of the installation art pieces was revealed by my students to me to be an elegial, ele elegiac work of art, a, a, a memorial mm -hmm. to uh, a number of hip hop artists now gone. Uh, and the work of art contains icons of their performance and of their significance for hip hop. Who knew? <laughs> and this was in an English class, a composition class. Yes. 
Yes. And so their writing also along the way uh, was, was affected. It was. It stretched them. It stretched them because they were used to writing on texts, uh -huh. in textbooks, no less. And to actually get up and get on the metro and go downtown and find the gallery and go in and find the exhibit and walk around in it, and to find it not only a visual medium, but a multimedia visual medium, to, to bridge the gap between their accustomed text-based writing and this more uh, challenging um, integration of visual literacy with information literacy in the English classroom, they leaped the gap. <laughs> Professor Nake, uh